It was interesting for me to observe the World Championships and see two or three of the teams there using shuffle options. Now, not the way that we would in regard to our methods where we would use a lot more continuity than what we saw at the World Championships, but I saw enough there to say the method is successful when executed well, as most offences are when executed well. But a couple of the points I want to make first about why we have adopted these methods that we've used in regard to giving attention to the theory of the game. First of all, what we'd like to do is to get high percentage shots close to the basket. We want to do that. So whatever our structure is, it's designed to try to get shots close to the basket, high percentage shots close to the basket, with rebounding responsibility and safety responsibilities built into that. Some of the things that we do, you may well be able to incorporate into your methods. We will teach this method to our under 12s. A lot of people say, it's too complex, it's too difficult. We teach it to under 12s, under 14, 16, 18, whatever, and there's a natural progression through the ranks. Simplified structure becomes more complicated as you get up to the level of our level, say at the National League level, and perhaps I could make a comment that the graph of, of, of complexity of your offence uh, starts off at virtually zero for your under 12s, then as you get to a higher standard, the graph goes up in requirement of something fairly heavily, heavily structured. As the talent and as the athleticism improves or increases, so that level of, of structure and of organisation gets less as a requirement. Until you reach the stage of the superior level, if you think about the NBA, the United States, and the United States in the World Championship, if you tried to scout them, it wasn't too difficult. But the point that I wanted to make in regard to the structure, or to any offence, you should have a balance of being able to get free with the ball, reasonably balanced with getting free without the ball. If you understand that, so if it's the United States, give the ball to Durant, he gets free with the ball, goes to score. Or if it's with others, let's say a passing game, motion game, you'll pass to a player, go and screen away, and you're trying to get a man free without the ball to create the chance for a shot. Get good balance between getting free with the ball and getting free without the ball. So it's those principles that we want to look at when we're going through our structure. We started numbering the positions of our players before the rest of the world did. And as a result, we're out of sync with the rest of the world in regard to numbering our players. Just come a step above the free throw line and face the basket, you're right. The way that we number our players are this man is number one, he's a feeder. The rest of the world says this guy's number one. But we say this man is number one and he's the feeder in the language of the game. This man is number two and he's head onto the basket. He's the point guard. This man is number three and he's the first cutter in the language of the game. This man is number four, he's the second cutter. This man is the five man, he's the post. In that position. But in the motion that we have, and what is a requirement of our team, and of what is a requirement of the game at the, at the international level, each of these players should be expected to have the same skills and be able to occupy any position in the same way as any other player. Every player must be capable of playing every position. And the motion that we do, that's what's required. What I'm going to do is just go through the basic, what we call third option shuffle. 
And this man here is in line with the post and the basket. He's always head onto the keyway. This man's a step above the free throw line facing the basket. This man's a step above the free throw line facing the basket. And you're probably in good position relative to the sideline. We're in pretty good shape there. The reason we do that and have them facing the basket, because if this man here wants to overplay and deny, lay up. Same thing here. If your man wants to overplay, and I suppose for most of you, what I'm about to say is very unconventional. We don't want this man to lead. We don't want him to make a lead. Is that a heresy or not? The reason being that this man is actually on the blocks. <laughs> he's, he's ready on the sprinting blocks and ready to go. So that if this man wants to deny, I better be a bit careful. So you've got your hand up here, ready to go. If I get in the passing lane, it's all over. So he doesn't really have to lead. It'll be demonstrated better in practice, but I just want to point out the theory of what we're doing. When this man passes from here to here, on that pass, this man pivots in the direction of the pass. He pivots on the foot in the direction of the pass and just holds his ground. We don't want this guy in his enthusiasm to help him to get wasteful blocking fouls. It is this man's job to run his opponent off the, off the postman, not you to bounce around here and get fouls on us. So you set your man up. When you make the pass, you take a step and a half away from the ball. Now you make a decision as to which side the defence is going to go. Whichever side the defence goes, you go the opposite side. So you set him up nicely here. When you run a cut, your shorts should feel his shorts as you go by. So, and so in the timing of it, you're setting your man up and you don't make that cut until the ball is in motion or with the feeder. So you make that cut. I just cut down near the block for a time being. As soon as he goes by, you step out and set a screen for this guy. You, make, you wait, the screen comes to you, not you coming to the screen. So you just make a jab step there. Your job is to make sure his defensive player cannot fight over the top. So to do that, you brush his shorts as you go. If, that's if you're coming over the top. Yep. Okay, just stay there for a minute. Your job is to stop me from sliding through underneath. So you come over here to a jump stop. And so if you're going that way and I'm trying to fight through, slide through, I've got to come back a step and you should be available there for a potential score. The rules are for the second cutter. For the second cutter, if the ball is high, you stay high. If the ball goes low, then you will go low. After you get contact, postman, after you get contact and this guy's come over here and that's what he expects, you just bounce backwards with that to the top of the keyway. So you're always facing the basket. You drop step, you're facing the basket, back to the feeder spot here. So right now we've got triangle options. Here's our prime target. We've got to find a way of getting the ball close to the basket. 
The rule is now, if the ball is in sight, either high or low, you must turn and face the middle. Give it on your inside foot and you will drop step and go behind your man. So your man's been helping and bumping and crashing the cutters. It's gone in here. You loop, you know, loop cut here to the basket. You're looking for him. You'll just flare a step, that's all you need to do. When you pass it in, you jab step and go baseline. If you couldn't get it to him, you're spotting up there, kick it to him. It's almost impossible for this guy now to be denied the ball. Get in the ball, turn and face the middle. The ball is low, you go low, you flare back again, you spot up over there, whack, whack, it's all over. Go back again. Okay, run a cut. Get it on. Screen, 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 screen. All right, this time, this time, this man had a bit of a step. It might be one of your dwarf guards. One of the little guards there, and he decides, I don't want to post up, I'm going to get buried in the forest here. I'll come out along the baseline. All right, so now you decide to throw it to him. If the ball is low, you go low. You've bounced out after that contact. All right. So now we're trying to get the ball inside here. If we get the ball inside here, all the same thing applies. You jab set and go baseline, you flare anywhere there, spot up there, you give it to him. Anyone, you're going to score. As the word implies, you wouldn't have to be a genius, we are shuffling from side to side. That's how the name of the, of the structure became recognised and fairly popular to what we're doing. Our rule always is, generally the instructions are, get it inside, get the ball inside for one more pass. Now it doesn't mean to say you must pass, because once we get the ball inside here, we're saying, percentage-wise, we are 80% successful. As long as we can find a way of getting the ball in here, we're going to get a high percentage opportunity with rebounding strength, safety, and all of those things. When you've done that a few times, and those of you who have watched the game when Andrew was playing, or Leonard Copeland was playing, this is what we did almost ad nauseum. Throw the ball to him, run your cut, because he's a fairly good player, I think that's been demonstrated over the years, this man, what they do is they want to try and keep it away from him. Deny that. So you're coming out here, he's trying to deny it, Get it into there, and a little, we call that a button hook. <music> to give you a better idea of how this works when defense is applied, we're going to play four on four. I'm the feeder, and there's no defense on me. All right, so I am going to feed the first cutter or the second cutter, and maybe. Maybe I might throw the ball to the post out here. If I do, then throw the ball on to the feeder. New feeder, that'll be you. And no other motion. And if you get the ball over there, you're playing one on one. Just take the ball to the rack and score.
All right, not bad. Just take that right to the basket. Lean in on that. It's not a bad play. Too early. Turn and face. Dive, dive. Oh, he could have got hard. Oh, stand still. See the problem? You, you know, you're very hard to see people when you've got your back to the basket. So as soon as you turn, whether you drop step or pivot that way, I don't care. Whatever's comfortable for you. But you've got to turn and face. Because he was free on that cut. He might not have realised it, but he was free. Just because he'd lost vision. If he loses vision, you give him the ball, that's a layup or a dunk. Or, and go from here. But you can't, you can't feed him with your back to the basket. Go again. That's taking too long. Turn face. Make it. Alright, not bad. Try to avoid getting too far under the basket. Just go until you pinch him and then bully. We're just running a third option drill. So in the practice, we'd have some shooting drills to start. One on, one, one on nothing, whatever shooting drills you apply. And now we just say third option drill, give him the ball. Say so third option drill, feed the first cutter. So just run your cut, everything's the same. Feed the first cutter, shoot it. Okay, shooter goes out, new man comes in, throw the ball out to the man who was the feeder. Step up the top of the key, you know where you were, come to the post, uh -uh. get in line with the post and the feeder. So you are practising your skills here on that pass. You pivot in the direction of the pass. Run your cut. Screen the imaginary foreman. Screen on the inside. Bounce back out. Out the corner. Good. Feed the first cutter. Give it to him. Feed the first cutter. Shooter goes out. Third option drill, feed the second cutter. So we feed the second cutter for the jump shot. Feed the second cutter for the jump shot. Third option drill, feed the second cutter. Shooter goes out, new man comes in. Same drill. Feed the second cutter. Good screen. Shooter goes out. What we've done so far in the demonstration of our third option is that we're, all of the action has been getting the man free without the ball. Run your cut, wait for the ball, give him the ball, expect to be able to get a shoot. All that's without the ball. Now we want to try to get some balance and say we want to try and get the man free with the ball. And there's a lot of stuff that we might do here. And it's balanced, with the ball, without the ball, within the ball. Get above the free throw line extended. Okay, so now we're going to run a first option. The instructions of this guy can be a little bit vague. Depending on the level of competition, the level of defence, what they tend to do will vary for this guy's instructions. But normally, we're saying as soon as the first option is generated, and that's generated by the pass, they need to make a call, that's the first option. This man just takes a couple of steps away here and waits to see what's happening here with the defence. So you're running your cut, you will go to the block anyway. So you're looking at that there, you're setting your screen. Now this man here will wait here until he sees what's happening with the defence. 
because if the defence makes a big jump switch there, he could be hung out there to dry <coughs> without someone to pass it to. So in which case, if, he's, if there's a double team there, you just step up and you give him the ball, so your first look now would be to him on the roll. So he would go down there, you screen, you pop out off that single screen, you keep going, you make the pass, you go back down to the block, and the, and the structure here will be the same as what we do if it hadn't been that way. Go back and do it all again. This time we're saying there's no jump switch. So you flare and come down on the double screen. Go down, go down the double. Your screen, all right, hold it there. You stay on that screen until the ball gets to the middle of the floor. Depending on the defence, which high screen switch or whatever it might be, he's going to get the middle of the floor, whether it's desirable at the free throw line, it might be out here, it might even be further out, depending on the defence. You wait until he gets the ball to the middle of the floor, and then you pop out on that screen in line with the screen and the basket so you can have some effective use of the screen. Make the pass. On that pass, the high man exchanges, whoever's the high man, and the low man just takes a step backwards from here. Because we want to occupy your man. If your man stays in there to try to help out on this guy, then you'll get the ball. You can shoot it or you can pass it to him. But otherwise, our payoff is this guy here. So he goes there, give him the ball, shoot it. All right, so now in a shooting drill, as it is with any part of your offense, we want to share the wealth. That is, everyone should have an opportunity to be a scorer in our play. Otherwise, someone gets a little bit disenchanted when he's just playing safety all the time and never gets a shot. No one ever gives me the ball. <laughs> so we've got to look after everyone. So in this drill, we say we'll go first option drill, five, four, three, two, and one. So everyone's going to get a shot. So on the first play, we go all the way for the post. First option, all the way to the post. Go down. Give it to him. The five man, okay. man. You take a shot off the double.
just show you the, the, uh, the pick. So what we did there was a pop. So we run through as if it's the two man shot. It's not going to be, it's going to be for the four men. Alright, now hold it. Ah, ah. This is for you now. So, so now we want to run a pick because your man's been misbehaving. So you come and give him a back screen. Give him an alley oop. Very popular play with good athletes. <laughs>the one man. The one man just takes his shot in the baseline. Step back, take your shot there. are going to do things to make it difficult for you. They understand that everyone's scouted, everyone Everyone knows what's going on. We're going, to take, we're going to take away the first option. He's not allowed to receive the ball. You keep your dribble alive, so if you see pressure, the strong pressure here, then you run a backdoor cut. If I lose vision, you can get it. Then you can come and get that and run your first option. That's the first option. Do it again. Or come out again. Might be some pretty strong pressure on you and some fairly strong pressure on you, in which case you'd be exchanging. We never ever want to pass it from guard to guard here if there's pressure on this guy. It's compulsory for him to go. And then you'll exchange, we'd run out, get into offense that way. But it may be that the defense is extended further out, and the more your defense is extended, the more difficult it is to have effective cuts off the postman. So if they've extended the defence, they're pressuring you, pressuring you, it's unusual for you not to be able to get the ball because it's so vulnerable, there's no help behind. So now you can throw the ball to him and run what we used to call an inversion, but that's a misnomer. So you run your backdoor cut there. Wait, wait, wait. So your timing is critical, so you can punish your guy for overplaying. That's all right, you, you go. You're going. This man here must sprint and replace him as quickly as possible. Just be patient, we haven't gone anywhere yet. So now, this man here is going to make a decision. That is, depending on his man, if he's playing a bit soft now because of the pressure, then you can come off for a handoff, and you'll roll in the normal way. That's the first option, you go down. Everything's the same as the first option. Go again. You see, so safety and those sorts of things are all, and the decisions are all relevant. Run it in inversion. Hard cut. Turn five. All right, now this man here, what we have found, for whatever reason, the guard here loves this option. Sometimes the point of doing it too much, because he's the man. If we haven't got a gut play here, he jab steps, and we come over a couple of times, he's absolutely naked on the second backdoor cut. And there's no one left to help out, and he, he loves this because he gets a lot of them. At any level, you know, we find. So it's more than you can't just walk down here. I mean, you sprint down here, make this guy, your defender, very nervous about which way you're going to go. And if you're one on one here without the ball, you can go anywhere faster forwards than he can backwards. So a, a, a good option. However, Let's say you decide to go back door and the defence was pretty good. You only go this far. So you go down now. So it's like now you're the four man has made a drive. 
So you just take a drive to the middle, beat your, pop it out to him, <coughs> come and exchange, and we're head only for the gardening. Either way. It can get, and it does get, much more complicated, subject to the defence and subject to what you want to put in to your offence. What I'm about to show you, we have not applied at our level, at our under 18, 3, 4, 5 and 6 level. But the higher levels, you're free to do this. And what I'm saying is going to run a reverse. This is the most difficult requirement for skill, judgement, decision making and execution of any part of our offence. It's one of the reasons why we don't use it with the under 18, 3, 4, 5 and 6s. One is we've never needed it at that level. Defence is not very good, so we never have any problems of getting the ball to the feeder. Or so far we haven't in a couple of years anyway. But nevertheless, for some of you, there needs to be what happens if. So you throw the ball to him. We can't throw the ball to him because there's really good defence and there's pretty good pressure on you. And because you couldn't get it, you've run a back door. But we couldn't get it to him. You're setting your man up. So at this point, if I'm here, and I've looked at him, I couldn't get it there. As soon as I look back at you, you go. Watch the ball, I might have given it to you. I might have given it to you there, depending on the postman. But because he's normally conditioned to help on that first cutter, that's usually not the go. So now I'm going to drive back, I'm going to run a, we're playing three on three here, temporarily. You must stay there and let the ball come to you, not you come to the ball. I don't want you bringing your man on to me. So I'm going to make a drive here, off the postman. Your man normally would be running some help. If not, I'm going to go and score. So your man helps out there. Now you come for the handoff. I give you the handoff and I keep going. Keep going. You take, you're like a first option now. You pep out. You roll after I've given the handoff. High man goes. Go over to him. Give it a bit. It's the same as the first option. So you're running a first option on a dribble handoff rather than the pass. I mean, you can make a pass if you like. But what I want to do is try and punish my man here for being a bit of pressure because I look, you go, you go. I'm going to drive here, I think I'm free. I think I'm free, usually I am. I can take that shot. You go, as soon as I get level, you go without the ball. Through the middle. Whoop, alley up, boop. Go behind. <laughs> so, you know, so now I couldn't get it, I kick it out to you. Give it to him. Now come exchange for me. Okay, so I've got the choice of using that screen. Typically now we're talking about getting the man free with the ball. We get a balance, get the man free without the ball, get the man free with the ball, have that sort of balance and we go. Okay, just run a reverse. reverse. Good. That's what the guards are doing. Reverse. That's continuous motion. You shouldn't have to stop for the handoff. I want to say there's a lot of skill requirement in this. When you're driving off from here, that should be just a, a straight, continuous handoff. Jab, step and go for that. One more go at this. Okay. So you do that a couple of times. And this guy here, who loves a bit of pressure, he says, no, that's not going to happen again because you're coming over here just to hand off there, boink, 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 pretty good. So now he starts applying more pressure. Run your reverse. Run your reverse. A little bit of jab step here, and then back door in. So you've got to keep your dribble alive, 
So as you're, as you're making your drive, you're driving up from here, we can see the pressure, back door, eyeball contact, layup, uncontested shot. Uh, we just call that a fist, so we just do it again. Reverse fist. Reverse fist. Okay. okay, do that again, except the defence stayed with him. Kick it out the post. Kick it out the post. Get it on. Not bad. One more go. This man's being pressured, this man's being pressured, he's being pressured, we've got some pretty tough defence. We need to arrange some pressure releases. We can do that by running a 25. Sorry. So as you're coming down the floor, he's being pressured, we want to release this, go and screen for him, just exchange. You pop out the T-spot, you're a postman. Throw it on. Now this is a good option because the little guard here is not used to helping out on cutters. And this usually gets a better opportunity for the first cutter to make a play because he's not so conditioned for blocking and bashing this guy on the screen. So you run a 25 to help on that. You screen on the inside, everything else becomes normal. We do that. Just run that. Just come down the floor, run a 25. Or we can run a 45. You see, so this man's being pressured, he's being pressured. You just need to come over and give your man a screen here. You bust into the post. Almost impossible now to deny this man the ball. So on that exchange there. So you've made that exchange, we can get our offense started, run your cut, and you've got a pressure release. So just run an exchange between these two. 's we don't have to do this too often because we don't have that much problems in getting started anyway is that you two can exchange so uh, you, 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 you know, this is because you're being pressured down the floor up get up there somewhere you see so right now it's a matter of who initiates this exchange we would usually call this you know a feeder exchange so you come and get him so you're screening, you go there, you set up, so it might be an inversion or you get it on, and we throw it to you. It's very unusual for that man to be pressured to make it more difficult for us to, um, to get our offense started. <laughs> One of the reasons why we favor what we do is because it doesn't matter what the opposition does. You know, they say, well, what do you do against the zone? You know, what, what happens then? Nothing changes. And it's great to come down the floor and you don't care what they're doing. We have experienced every different sort of defence imaginable. And it's only through that experience 
as you build on your method that you recognise the solutions to some of these rather spectacular methods of defence that are thrown against us. So whether it's a box and one, triangle two, strong overplays, zone defence with man-to-man -man principles, man-to-man -man defence with zone principles, whatever it is, the method, the structure will, if you make the right decisions and the right execution, be able to provide you with the shot that you're looking for. That is the one close to the basket. With a few minor changes, and the minor changes are in the timing of the cuts, uh, the location of the cuts, and where your priorities might be in your scoring options, depending on, on the zone. So if we said we're going to run a third option against a zone, then you never delay. You don't, you don't delay until the ball's with the feeder. You cut straight away. All right? Uh, just run a cut. Throw it on. Okay, wait, 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 wait. wait. Okay, now you're right, you're, you're cutting. So in this, we're reading the defence. What is the defence doing? Are they going with him, you, whatever? Now, instead of you screening on the inside, you just flare wide, just flare over here. This man here, he makes his cut according to the defence. Now, that, his cut here might be down here, might be over the top, might be through the middle. But as soon as, that, as soon as he goes, he goes over there, you step up the top. You just step up straight away. So you've got no screening responsibilities. And you're making your cut. More often than not, it's through the middle, probably about here. And we're hoping you can get it. Because if he can get it, and you're diving, we've got all the same things that we do against the man and man. So you'll go there. But it might be down here, it might be through the middle, or it might be over the top of the defence over here. But the mission is to get it into him. Get it into him if you can. And like everyone says, with a zone offence, once the ball is on the inside, you're 80% successful. All we've got to do is find ways of getting the ball inside. If we get a ball inside, we can make that happen. So, however, we couldn't get it. You come over here. Couldn't get it inside, throw it to him. You don't hesitate, you go to the block. Get it on as quickly as you can. Go to the block. Don't care what you two do. That is, you can come out or you can come out. He comes out sort of traditionally, we're three out, two in. So we run two thirds to three out, two in, and now it's penetrate and dish. You see, usually you got, for most, my level, <laughs> we don't have a 24 second shot clock. You know, makes no difference whatsoever. <laughs> it doesn't matter. It wouldn't matter if it was a five minute shot clock, it doesn't matter, you see, because they can't score anyway, or very, very little. Because they're passing the ball, they will learn more, they learn more, and the 24 second shot clock is not relevant to that level of competition. Shouldn't even be considered. But anyway, at other levels, you see at this point here, when you've had this much motion, I would defy the situation to say you haven't got a penetration opportunity. And you penetrate in there and you'll find one of these people. It's one of the things, I think we might have done this at a drill at our last clinic, I don't know how many came to the last clinic, but um, the penetrating dish, three out, penetrate becomes critical. So we just go two thirds to, to three out, two in. Just run that through once. I reckon he should have got it on the inside there. First option, against the zone. Against the zone, the screen, the on-ball screen, will be just as effective as what it is man to man. That's if they defend him. <laughs> Sometimes they don't worry about him. But nevertheless, we'll assume that there's decent defence, throw the ball to him, run your cut, and just go to the block for a count of one. Uh, 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 uh. So in this case, we're not going to screen. That's, uh, the on-ball screen is more of a special against the zone. On the first option, you go to the block in the same way. All right, now you step out like a UCLA cut. Give him the ball, 
and you're cutting behind him, you're just going to the block down here, uh, give him the ball, give him the ball, uh, wait, 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 sorry, you're, you're, you're curling around there and you're going to the corner. Just, just curl out to about there. So you should be, about there, about there was where you'd be. Give it to him. This man should love it. Because the way that the defence has to operate, someone has to defend him. And that leaves the vacancy. If you can make that, you're going to get a lot of points. Just run that again. Nice. Don't mind the shop, you always got to look at him first. <coughs> okay, so in that situation, on a regular first option, he should get excited because that's a play that's designed to give him the shot in the baseline. Now we're going to run a first corner. So you throw the ball to him, just come to the block as you were, but this time come to here. Throw him the ball, now you cut. Throw the ball out to the postman, cut behind it, now you go. Give him the ball, turn the corner, so this time it's you. So if you want to be selfish, you run first corners all night. <laughs> and you get in there. First corner. Same thing, I don't mind you shooting that, but you've got to look at him first. See if we can get the ball inside. I should explain the movement of the feeder down here. The feeder down here, his job is to screen the baseline defensive player down here. So he screens him. You do that a couple of times and he gets a bit anxious about attending to the cutter coming around behind. So what he needs to do is balance and with good judgement and good vision from you, if that man is not behaving himself and defending, then you can power in. You power in to get the ball off him, you can make your play or you can dish it to one of the cutters. So this time feed him in there. Same thing. First, first corner. corner. First corner. Yeah, give it to him. Alright. No, 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 you're still cutting. Yeah. You, you, you go, as soon as you throw it, your ass is on fire and you get through there. Get through there. Uh, now, when you power, I want you to give it to him. Yep. So you're here with the second guy. Go again. Hard cut. Yep. Sprint. Go, go. Keep going. He's the one. One man takes the defence, next man fills the gap. He becomes a very high percentage player. So long as the timing is right, so long as you can feed, you've got to be able to recognise all of that. Do that again. First one. Get it. You guys run whatever offence you like and let's see what happens with the defence, see what happens with our options. Now hang on, right there, I should explain. One of the reasons I get very almost paranoid about this position, you must be directly at this position here. And the explanation for that is if you receive the ball, you've got to get respect, unless you're so bad that they don't care what you do. You see, so if you get the ball there, you should be in a position to make a threat. So presumably you're going to defend him. All right, now we want you to be in a position, usually with your right foot on the, on the three-point line here. So if you give the ball to him, what's going to happen? Presumably he's going to take him. Cutter goes. What's going to happen? He's probably, where's our second cutter? So you get the ball in the gap, unless he can't say he comes to him. If he gets the ball, you're going to dive, you're going to flare, 
chances are we might have a, a reasonable opportunity. But if you allow these two guys to match up so that he takes the first pass over here, it might take a little bit more work. So make sure you, I mean, for example, get back to, let's say, you know, quite often a defence might be doing that. You see, so I've got to have the guts to be able to take it into the gap. So if you're there, I can kick it back to you. We can run reverses against the zone as well. But if you're doing the right thing there and fixing that up, it's all right. But if you spread the floor, we've got to make sure we have the courage to get in here, take this, you give us a gap there, whatever, we can finish it from there. So make sure you keep that defence honest. Inside, three, two, get it out. I think you might have just answered the question that I was going to ask. Can you make it from here? Good percentage? Uh, just run it first, but make an on-ball screen. Let's see what happens. You drive, what's going to happen? He has to guard him, presumably, what you're doing. That's why I said, can you make that shot there? Because if you're spotting up here, <laughs> That's available. So if he comes to you, we've got either of these two to go there. That's why I said the on-ball screen against the zone can be just as effective, depending if you've got some people that require respect. Okay, first corner. Not bad. I think I'd prefer the penetration on that. That's an easy shot, I mean, easy shot to take, not necessarily easy shot to make. But have some balls there, take it into the, into the forest. Not bad. And rebounding situations there is, is not too bad. Uh, I want you to vary it because you, you're making good screens and what we're getting is good opportunities. But just for the purpose of the practice, when you come down there and rack him, just as he comes around, you give us a target in here and see if you can hit him. Do it again. Best corner. Barry. All right. Um, your timing is that you want to get that pass if they get there. So when you're running your cut, you see that, you're a little bit of timing because if he goes up, he can spike it down to you and you make your layup. Well, I'm on the side of that side. Yeah, you're, you're the second cutter. He's the first cutter. You'll be the second cutter on that. So that you're the one that could get a pass from him on that one here. When he powers on the inside, you could get that pass. Again. Again. First corner. All right, I'll do it again, do it again. Sometimes guards are dyslexic. You see, if you call the play yeah. and say first corner, then the other guy's expected to be first corner. Yeah. That means you've got to go to the corner. <laughs> you call the play, but if you yeah. did that... Now, you've got to be smart enough to realise that you made yeah. an unusual call and didn't behave. So, but if you say first corner, then run a first corner. First. <laughs> Take it in there! You see, when you get to that position there, remember the rules and the officiating is overwhelmingly in favour of the offence. You know, it's very, very difficult to play defence without it being extraordinarily physically demanding and totally committed. So when you see, when you have the ball here, and he was sort of half leaning on it, and you see a gap in there, just pound that in there, make a shot. The high probability is that they'll foul you, or you'll score, or you'll get a good shot. But don't let them off the hook if they don't defend you right. Best corner. Cut! 
swing it, swing it, swing it, swing it! Get it. is what we've done here so far is we've shown you what and we've shown you a little bit of how but what we haven't explained well and there hasn't been time is why why are we doing this why are we going to this guy why are we going to that guy so we obviously we need a lot more time to be able to explain all the reasons that we evolve our pressure releases our priorities who do we want to go to and why Mark Bradkey, we want to go to Mark. Andrew, we want to go to Ed Copes or what, you know, whoever it might be. Chris, we want to go to you. How do we best go to him for what the opposition is doing to us? This is all part of the practice and the drill and creating situations in the game or in training to say, we're a point down, there's 30 seconds to play, uh, I've run out of timeouts, are the players capable of making a decision? because I no longer have any influence on the game. So that all has to be in a practice situation, and most of that comes from constant repetition tied in with the, you know, the, the fundamental skills. Because for all of you doing here, if you can't pass, you can't dribble, you can't catch, you can't shoot, it's meaningless. But when you are running this structure of whatever we're doing here, you can make it look like an entirely different offence depending on your priorities with the emphasis on this or that, guard, a perimeter game, inside game. You can do almost whatever you like if you, if you observe those principles of saying, we want to try and find a way of getting a high percentage shot inside. If not, what's plan B? If they take one thing away from you, then there should be a solution. Like, I'm not going to talk physics and Newton's laws. For every action, there is a reaction. So in basketball, it's like Newton's laws. Who are, who are the engineers in physics amongst us? Don't worry about it. So for whatever you do, for every action, there is a reaction. So if I set the screen here, what are they going to do? They're going to switch, they're going to roll, they're going to slide. Read those results, read the game from there, and then you've got your chance to make a judgment decision. You can never, ever predetermine what they will do. The offense is designed to force the defense to do something, and then you can punish them.